Well, hello, folks, and welcome to A Sportsman's Life. I'm Luke Clayton and my two good buddies. Jeff Rice. And Larry Weissen, and we're so proud that you're with us this week. I'll be very honest with you. I have no idea where we're going. There is no telling, but it's going to be fun. We're going to have a good time, folks. Stay tuned. We have another great adventure on A Sportsman's Life coming your way. Well, folks, thanks for watching today. We're at beautiful Lake Texoma with Mr. Bill Carey, one of my longtime buddies. And we're going to go out and catch some stripers. Bill is not actively guiding these days. He's running the show, aren't you, Bill, from the office head, mostly? Head chef and bottle washer. <laughs> head chef. <laughs> well, I was trying to remember how long it had been since you and I first fished together. Striper Express is going on, I think, 38 years. Yep. yep in business close to that by golly uh you hadn't been guiding long when i first fished with you up here i'll say 30 let's make it around 35 years ago Sounds something good to like me. that been a while been a while uh but you're out kind of a banker's holiday today with us we're just having fun out here we're going to probably catch some strikers i'm tickled to death i'm glad to have you all here well we're, we're thrilled to be here we're going to use the uh Sassy shad type baits, Bill. You bet. Well, for, we're gonna use these six gill rigs. Six and, gill, yes. And we've got a bunch of yeah, jigs here's tied one. up. I, I got one right here. There you go. We're gonna be using the sassy shad. This is a glow bait. It, it glows underwater. And uh, this is the go-to bait right now. Soft plastics, three-quarter ounce head, sassy shad jigs. And six gill. I'll tell you what. I have one of these. I think I have this identical rig at home i did i thought i'd use yours today bill this six gill these are some quality products not only they're reels they make all kind of stuff but i'm looking forward to dropping that down on a big old striper okay. uh are they are they schooling now uh, are you finding under the birds that kind of action you or? betcha the most important tool to bring on a trip is your binoculars watch the birds the real fish have shown up so you can catch any size underneath them now it was small 30 days ago sand bass and medium small stripers but now they're the real deal but we're going to be also fishing structure we're going to go for a few bigger fish okay well if you're ready to go i uh, i know our cameraman mr jeff rice back here is i can tell by looking at him he's ready to roll don't you think well, welcome back let's do this let's make a pack let's do this again let's start with say seven years from now <laughs> <laughs> Let's go catch some fish, what do you say? You bet, guys. I'm going to throw these sassy shads here on a slope. There's 50 foot water in front of us, the Red River Channel, and we're drifting a cut here. So I'm going to cast it out. Don't try and throw it over the moon. Let it fall. And we're up in 18 already. Talking about there, and I'm gonna start reeling. When in doubt, jerk. <laughs> Game time, let's go. Come on, fish. All right, folks, there we go. Numero uno. Look at that. Like, like they're schooling. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, that is a good one. I'm acting like they're out All we school. care about is you get one in the boat there, my friend. Good That's job. Right. Yeah, we're gonna. We're All gonna... right. All right. I tell you what, it's it's time. Uh, there is two blackening. Oh, buddy. Look at that. Yeah, that's beautiful fish. That is beautiful fish. Yeah, it broke the ice. Snug him out there. Yes, indeed. All right. Now you found them, buddy. So now it's our job to go out here and catch some. This is this is a pose of a striper right here, a oh, head yeah. that I just love. Got a beautiful fish and good to eat. Saltwater transplant, Lake Texoma, the salinity and the Red River and the Washita, that's why they're here, right? That's Bill? right, they'll fight to the finish. Well, a gorgeous day with great friends. This is spectacular. Don't get, as they say, it don't get any better. That's right. Right. Welcome to Lake Texoma. That's right. <laughs> let's go out there and get now another Now let's, let's get some steel pictures while we can. Okay. Well, buddy, an absolutely fantastic day. What do you think? 
structure? I want to tell you yeah. what, this this for a winter, you know, winter fishing trip, weather's perfect. You can time yourself and, and, and have some phenomenal fi uh, striper fishing in the wintertime up here at Texoma, as Bill will tell you. Uh, no reason to quit fishing just because it's wintertime. It's really a time to get out here and fish, you know? It sure is. I saw some some breaking right over there and Bill's grass was lit up, so let's catch some more. What do you say? All right, Captain Bill's gonna move us on. We're moving forward. Okay, that's his only two fish. He says, Yeah, he tapped it really, really slow one time and then I more or less set the hook. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. There you go, buddy. Yeah, yeah. Woohoo! Yeah. Yeah, Bill slow, yeah, Bill slow, wait just a minute. Bill just slow down. Hold him down lower. You know, I tell you, Bill, that thing, a very, very soft bite. That's uh, winter. Mm -hmm, winter time. So that's the trick that, that I've learned is just a slow, slow crank and then slow down some more. That's right. But I felt that fish just a thump. And then, wait a minute, so I got, I really got locked in on him and then he hit it again and yeah. set the hook. Yeah. So, the one that, that you just hooked, I saw you do the same thing. Yep, they'll fight you hard, but today the sun is shining and the wind has laid, and I got a saying, when the sun shines and the wind lays, you might as well go water skiing, but guess what? We can catch them on days like this when nobody else can. <laughs> well, for this, Indeed. right? For this. We try hard. <laughs> well, let's get some more. All right. Let's okay. have fun, boys. All right, more fun to come here in a sportsman's life. Super. Oh, yeah. That's what the telephone, that's what the 300 millimeters for. Watch that get up. Fly, that'd make a good shot, too. And this, this one, I'm not going to horse because I would like to put him in the boat. I don't think this will hold him. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> no, let him what? I don't think you're going to get on your line. No, I'm going just line up. Just in case. Just in case. I'm going to line there and mine, mine away there. No, this could be anything from a catfish to a big old buffalo. I believe it's a bar. <laughs> I mean, a but he's not fighting like a striper. No, it's, it's not a line with sideways. It's a cat. Let's let, let him tire down. Is he rolling? There he is. Oh no, he's all hooked. hooked. That's what it is. Oh, it's a nice one too. Uh, you, he's barely hooked. Do you want to okay. get on him? Hey, oh, gone. Okay. That's all right. He decided to. Got your release. <laughs> That's the way uh, fishing goes. <laughs> yeah, I hooked him up. Thought that was a giant, but it was a foul hook. It was a foul hook. About, yep. You know, about that long. But gosh, I thought it was a big old uh, catfish. Hey, it's fun either way, right? Yeah, I did too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I went sideways and I went, that's a catfish. Let's go get another one. All right. I had a customer stick a 16 one time right here, and I thought it took quite a while to land it. And I thought he had a world record. <laughs> I mean, it took forever. Oh. It ended up being a 16 pound fish. Wow. But he had all the power right there. Yep. Okay, I'll get serious again. So All right, I'm back to jigging. Back to jigging, dropping the jig. Hey, there's a perch. Let me get right here. Pretty I, I, I barely turned the camera off and big old sandbags. Luke is on them. Those things will eat. Oh, nice little sandy. All right. You know that's a darn good Look size. Look at that. Takes a little sand. Nice fish. Yeah. There you go. On a beautiful winter day, this is awesome. Look at that, buddy. A pretty How about sand that? Bass, isn't he? Beautiful. So if there, what I do know about sand bass, where there's one, mm -hmm. there's usually a few more. So let's go get them. Let's go get them. All right, we'll be back.
folks, welcome back to A Sportsman's Life. Uh, Bill Carey has taken us out on Striper Express. This was a fun trip. No, this was no guide. Of course, he is the guide. He's the man. But we want to thank you for a wonderful day in the water, a winter day. We're in December. We're just a, a week out from Christmas, and boy, what a beautiful day, huh? Good times. Good times. Man, I had an absolute ball. Oh. So good to get with Bill. Like we mentioned earlier, uh, 35 years ago we first fished together. Jeff's running with us now, catching oh, yeah. fish. And good time. Great time up here with Striper Express. Appreciate. We both appreciate. Appreciate, appreciate the time, you. but you really do. Very much appreciated. Thank you. Look, we've got some uh, fillets to take home, folks. Uh, Merry Christmas to everybody. We want to thank you for joining us here. Uh, we're going to move on to our next segment, though. But uh, stay tuned. We've got a lot of great stuff coming on a sportsman's life, and some good fish to boot. Look at that. Ooh. Let's fillet those babies up, huh? Yeah. Hey folks, this is Scott Wallace with Smoking Text. I want to show you our, well, this is our main model, the, the unit that we started the company with almost 20 years ago today. We still build it the same way. Uh, all double wall stainless steel, insulated 850 plus degrees. We think it's the best electric smoker on the market. We hope you will too. And we do have a little bit less expensive alternative here. Um, we brought this on to give people a little more flexibility in terms of if he has a uh, space restriction, needed a place to put it on the boat or out at the lake house or the deer lease. It's a little bit smaller. Uh, again, this is our most popular and of course we have them bigger all the way up. Our next model up is 995 and it's a really good, I feel like it's the most appropriate size for the home. If you'd like to order a smoking text, it's easy to do. Uh, we have a great website. You're more than welcome to get on there and look at our recipes, our videos, and our forum section where people are exchanging tips. Uh, you can also uh, place an order there in our shopping cart. Uh, we are on the web, and you're welcome to call us at 888-922-1511 or drop us an email at sales, S-A-L-E-S, at S-M-O-K-I-N-T-E-X dot com. Hope we hear from you soon. Ticks are everywhere, and ticks a lot of times cause a lot of different problems. I mean, they're, they'll make you itch for a long, long time, but uh, there's also such a thing as called Lyme disease. It started up in Pennsylvania years ago. Lyme disease is spread all over North America, and it is a serious disease that you can get from a tick bite. Generally, if you get bitten by a tick and you see kind of a rosette forming on you, that's a sure sign that you've got, probably have got it. You want to get to the doctor as soon as quickly as you can because our treatment's available if you get to them very quickly. But sometimes, too, you may get a tick bite and it won't even show that rosette and you could still have Lyme's disease. Lyme's disease is kind of like a, a flu sometimes to start with, but it also can manifest in a lot of different ways to where you end up having bad, ar bad arthritis problems, breathing problems, heart problems, all those kind of things. It mimics lots of different diseases. Anytime you go out, you need to look for ticks regardless. And with deer populations and the wildlife populations that we have now in some of the small communities, the, the rural areas, of course, but also some of the suburbs, lots of ticks in those areas. So you want to check yourself for ticks when you come in. If you're going to pull one off, take a pair of tweezers, get all the way down to the bottom as close as you can to where the tick is attached and pull it off. And, uh, but you know what I try to do is there are two things I don't like or three things, mosquitoes, ticks, and chiggers. Now, if you live in the south and even some parts of the southeast and the north, you know what chiggers are. They'll itch and bite for, seem like for days. The way that you get away from that is to use this product right here. It's called a Sawyer's Insect Repellent. It is a permethrin. It's an odorless permethrin. This kills ticks on as soon as it contacts. Now, you don't put it on yourself. You put it on your clothing. You spray it on the clothing and it uh, comes with available in several different sizes. This just happens to be one that's a, uh, it's set up for scissors. It treats two garments completely. So you just kind of spray it on and let it dry and then you can wear your clothes right after that. But again, you don't want to spray it on your body. You want to spray it on your clothing. Uh, underwear, socks, pants, shirt. I put it on my hat, caps, all those kind of things. And essentially what it does, it kills that tick as soon as it gets into that area where that permethrin is. I've, I've hunted in parts of Africa where fever ticks were horrible to the point to where you'd look down at a pair of pants like this and it would turn from this color to dark brown there'd be so many ticks and with that spray on there with the permethrin spray that I've used I never had any problem with any of the ticks never got a tick bite. Rode around in chigger 
bed where I should have gotten covered up with chiggers and didn't. So if you get a chance, if you're going to spend any time outside, and I'm talking about even in the edge of the cities right now because with the schools out, no schools going on, kids are spending a lot of times, you know, maybe in the, the little creek bottoms, a little backyard type thing, they can get the ticks right there. And there's probably about, it's been said there's upwards to 200 kids a day that come down with Lyme disease. Now that can be a very debilitating disease, as I mentioned. It can kill you if you don't take care of it. There are some treatments available. You can look, if you want to learn more about the Lyme disease thing, you can just go on to any kind of a, a Google search or whatever and just type in L-Y-M-E disease and you'll learn all about it and some of the other symptoms that are there. All those kind of good things organizations that will tell you more about it so that you can prevent the problem and if you think you might have it you darn sure want to go get checked it's easily enough done uh, it mimics very much even probably some of the COVID symptoms that people have right now so who knows you want to be sure to use this product simply all you do is just kind of just spray it on until it gets good and wet and then turn it over and spray all, all the clothing. I, a lot of times too, if I'm gonna be in an area, if I'm gonna not be wearing tall boots, what I'll do is I'll open up the pant and I'll spray on the inside as well too. Again, this will kill that tick or that jigger and it also keeps mosquitoes away. So it can be found just about anywhere. I usually go to Walmart, Bass Pro, Cabela's, almost any place that sells camping equipment will sell this right here and it's called Sawyer's Insect Repellent but you want it to be the permethrin. Be sure it says P-E-R-M-E-T-H-R-I-N. That's going to make all the difference in the world. Hi folks, it's your old buddy Luke Clayton and welcome to our little cooking segment of the show today. You know, squirrels and small game in general, uh, through the years there's been a real diminished interest in cooking and actually in hunting squirrels. I mean, when I was a kid growing up in northeast Texas, squirrels, there were way more squirrel hunting going on than there were deer. I remember some old guys when I was a kid, folks, that would set up a camp out in the woods up north of Clarksville, up in Red River County, a squirrel camp. They'd camp out three or four days, set up wall tents, cook squirrels, have squirrel hunting contests. It was a big deal back in the day. But through the years, uh, big game, deer hunting in particular, has kind of took the place of squirrel hunting. And you know, a lot of youngsters skip the small game hunting, which is not really good. I mean, you, uh, squirrel hunting can teach you a lot about hunting in general, you know. So I, I, I love to squirrel hunt, and I, I usually freeze up a bunch of squirrels. So what I thought we'd do today in our little cooking segment, uh, I've got, you can't see it all, but I've got our cast iron uh, skillet and the lid and all that kind of stuff. We're going to make some smothered squirrel. Uh, I'm not going to cook up a big bunch because honestly I'm here at the old, see my camp back here, I'm up here by myself and I don't really need a lot of, lot of food. But I am going to cook one squirrel, I'm going to show you how to do it. Uh, it's really simple but I'll get the camera up close and kind of hone in on the skillet, what we're doing. But the, the end result is a, like a lot of stuff I cook is a one skillet meal folks. Uh, going to have gravy, squirrel and rice. <laughs> If you've never had squirrel, don't, if you've never eaten squirrel, do not rule it out. I mean, it was a staple back when I was a kid growing up, and I've always loved it, but my, us, my family, like everybody else, just through the years, we started, had so much venison and things like that to eat, other game, big game, that we quit uh, eating squirrel a lot. We're going to cook some squirrel, so stay with me. I'm going to get the camera up close, put the old cast iron skillet down here, with a lid. That's one staple that uh, that I never leave home without when I'm at camp. We're going to make some smothered squirrel, so stick with me. So folks, we'll just have a little squirrel tutorial, how to cook squirrel. You can see right here in my old trusty cast iron skillet, I have the squirrel just about brown to perfection. Now that's the first thing we want to do. Now. Granted, if we were at camp with a lot of people, I would have had several squirrels, but I'm just cooking enough for me right now. The end result will be gravy and rice with this squirrel, and it's going to be really, really tasty. But what we're going to do next, I'm going to drain some of the grease out of here, uh, add a little, little bit of chopped onion, leave a little grease in, of course, and a little chopped onion, and uh, add a can of, uh, or probably half a can, of cream of mushroom soup. Now you can make 
cream gravy, but at camp all the time, people don't have milk to make cream gravy. Now, one thing that uh, while I'm on this subject, this happened to be a young fox squirrel. It would have been good fried. I didn't have to pressure cook it or anything. But if you kill, uh, if you have a bunch of older squirrels, say mature squirrels, put them in a pot and cook them or a pressure cooker if you got a little pressure cooking pot or just a regular pot with a lid. Cook them about 45 minutes and tender, tenderize them and then dust them with flour and fry them. That's, they'll turn out just as tender as any but this is just a little test batch with one squirrel to show you how to do it. So let me get the, uh, the cream gravy ready and the onion and then we'll be right back. We'll just follow through and let you see that part of it. Okay folks, there is our cream gravy and I just simply opened a can. Let me show you what I've got here. Ah, it's upside down. But, just a can of uh, cream of mushroom gravy. Get it at Walmart or anywhere. It's good stuff. But that saves us making uh, cream gravy out here at camp, which can be a pretty difficult task. Not hard to do, but you have to keep the milk cold till you make the gravy, etc. Let's look at these pieces though. Actually, what we have, you know, is the, the quartered up squirrel, the front legs and the back legs, you see, and then the back. And this is one, only one squirrel, folks. So if I was feeding a camp, you know, usually I'll cook four or five squirrels, but, and plenty of black pepper. You'll see the, if you look really close, you'll see the black pepper in there. That's a must. So what I'm going to do now, and we'll just do that while you're watching here, I'm going to add the rice and the water and stir it all up, bring it up to temperature, let it cook, let that rice, it needs to cook about 25 minutes. So we're gonna add that and stir it in right now. So let's do that. I've kind of pre-measured this rice. This is about the amount of rice I wanna put in there. I don't wanna to, don't want to have too much rice, but we do need enough to, rice, gravy, and squirrel, that's just a staple. That's about the right amount of rice. Now, you know, when you add rice, you have to add about the same amount of water. So let's put some water in here with this. Stir it all up really well. There we go. Now, now then, what we'll do, we'll put the lid on this and we're gonna let it cook real low for about 25 minutes. And bingo, there's gonna be dinner for us right there. So I'll show you a picture of the finished product. Maybe you can put it on a plate and uh, show you what it looks like. Well folks, our squirrel and gravy has simmered about 30 minutes. We added the rice and let it cook. Let's pop the top on this thing and see what it looks like. I don't know how many of you have had smothered squirrel, but this should be really, really, really tender. So let's, let's take a look. Oh yes. Yeah, I can, look, look at this. Now that's obviously fall off the bone tender, folks. That's the, the squirrel. That would be the drumstick of the squirrel. And all of you that are, you know, a little bit hesitant about eating squirrel, let me guarantee you that this is awesome. See how this just flakes off the... Look at that. That is some of the most tasty meat that you can imagine. We have everything all mixed together. And this is about enough for me. <laughs> I, I bet I can't eat half of that. Um, but usually, like I say, when I'm cooking squirrel, I've got, I'll have it up halfway with gravy and four or five squirrels in there. But it's just me here at camp today, so I think what I'll do is get a plate and maybe a bowl and just pile that up with squirrel, rice, and gravy and, and get after it. Folks, I hope you've enjoyed this little segment on our cooking. We do try to bring something different to you every week. and. Probably this is the first time you've seen a squirrel cooking show on, um, on, on YouTube or on our videos, but hope you enjoyed it. Let's get back to the rest of our show. Folks, welcome to A Sportsman's Life. We are here with uh, legendary John Hale, race car driver, uh, stunt pilot. John does a little bit of everything, but I can tell you one thing that John does very, very well is makes best of Texas barbecue sauce. Uh, you can find us at our website, uh, www.bestoftexasbbqsauce.com. You can order there. We have specials on uh, right now for uh, uh, you buy five jars, you get one free. You buy ten, you get two free, which uh, 12 is the case. 
Very good. Well, folks, if you have not tried Best of Texas barbecue sauce, I promise you it is better than the Best of Texas. It's the best there is. I, maybe you should change the name Best There Is Barbecue Sauce. I like it. <laughs> so, folks, get you some Best of Texas barbecue sauce. John, thank you so much. Thank and you. Uh, appreciate, uh, appreciate your barbecue sauce. <laughs> Ranch folks are out here trying to get a wild boar tonight. So stick with me. Maybe we'll have some action. That was a good shot. He went 12 yards, maybe 13. Wow, nice hog. That was a nice boar. Wow, we put the smack down on that dude. <laughs> well, another successful hunt here at the Buck and Bass Ranch. Wild boar hunting out here is just, it's, it's incredible. There's a lot of hogs out here, a lot of fun. I'm so blessed to have this place and come out here and do this. So. All right, pork chops down. Now the work begins. This is incredible. Beautiful night here at the ranch. As you saw, we had a big old sounder come in. Holy cow. This big old boar's part of the group. So, we're gonna get out the trusty knife and cut up some pork chops here at the Buck and Bass Ranch. So, wow. That's a dandy. <laughs> All right, let's get some pictures and uh, then we'll. Uh, We'll go drink from the boar goblet tonight. Folks, thank you so much for joining us here on our Sportsman's Life. I mean, what a great, great adventure we had today again, and looking forward to another great adventure next week, huh, boys? You betcha. I'm ready to, ready to go. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I want to stay right here. Y'all join Keep us going. next week. <laughs>
and a special thanks to these fine sponsors. Air Force Air Guns, B&B Charcoal, Dallas Safari Club, Hornaday, Pyramid Air, Sightmark, Smokin' Tex, Snap Block Hunting Blinds, Texas Raised Hunting Products, and Striper Express.